welcome to the morning show morning surjit and uh, let me start by saying great to be here on this show with you uh, i've known you for a long time you've done multiple interviews so good to be back over here again from a auto a finance company to one of the largest nbfcs in the country it's been a long journey you have had the uh, amazing run in the last uh, few years both in the stock market and in terms of financials if you could briefly say now what's next for the next 2 uh, 3 years for you you are one person who has seen our journey at bajaj finance over the last now almost a uh, decade and a half um you know this journey started in 2007 as, as you correctly said till then bajaj finance it was called bajaj auto finance at that time was uh, primarily a captive financier for our uh, motorcycles scooters three wheelers of bajaj auto because when this company started in the late 80s at that time it was not common for banks and other nbfcs to do consumer loans and, and that's why we we started our own now over the years especially between 2000 and 2005 and 6 as india really started growing and the financial services space as you know in any country needs to grow at two to three times that of the uh, real economy so that it supports the economy going forward that's when we realized that we have this uh, significant opportunity in the financial services space and uh, that's when uh, i moved uh, out of bajaj auto into uh, my role at bajaj finserv and one of our main companies other than our two insurance companies bajaj alliance was bajaj uh, auto finance in those days we were very clear um, from our early days that we wanted to build a diversified tech first um, lending business uh diversified because that's how you diversify the risk that's how you balance your asset and liabilities you balance high return but uh, seasonal businesses with lower return longer uh, duration businesses and overall you create a book that uh, ends up being a solid long term book so that you are able to raise funds raise liabilities accordingly at competitive rates we were also very clear that we would focus around the middle class consumer that is where the bulk of india lay and of course a few segments up a few segments below because that customer had a reasonably solid wallet size where if we established their credit uh, early on it gave us an opportunity to sell to them multiple products and solutions thereby moving from a single transactional relation to a more 360 degree relationship with the customer and if you have a continuous 360 degree relationship with the customer as a lender you are forced to ensure customer comes first in everything that you do because it's not one loan you're giving to the customer you're going to be there multiple times it also ensures that the customer sees you as someone important to them as part of their life cycle and that's why the customer will stay true to you will hopefully default last with you uh, in their own relationship with you and that's really the journey of uh, bajaj finance over the last uh, 14 years it has been about systematically adding new products every couple of years about building geographical capability initially the first 50 cities then the next 500 cities today we are now in over 3000 cities and towns around the country uh, of which uh, over 75% is outside of the big cities so very strong presence in rural india um, and uh, across these uh, geographies or products our focus continues to be to use data to use analytics to understand more and more about the customer so that we can understand what is the risk of the customer versus our own risk appetite now when i look at the next 5 years this world is going digital it has already gone digital there are some businesses which may be less digital which are more hardcore manufacturing or services but many businesses like us have not only a very significant digital opportunity but if we don't get it right we will have uh, new players come in that will threaten what we are doing the pandemic in a way enabled us to pause through the first lockdown to reset what we were doing reorganize our thoughts and create a new strategy for the digital world and over the last 2 uh, years that's what uh, bajaj finance has now been focusing on implementing and our new uh, app 
what internally we call our three in one app is a digital app which puts the customer right in front for a frictionless experience across our multiple products and services and not only products that we make like our loan products but also investment products that we sell for others uh, payment products that uh, we work with partners and we are building our own as well and uh, also protection products like insurance which we sell for bajaj alliance and for uh, a few other high quality partners as well so it is about creating that next generation experience for customers but it is also about creating it for partners because as i just talked about we sell products for a number of partners we work with uh, over 100000 uh real retail stores around the country we work with large manufacturers of all kinds of products from televisions to mobile phones to furniture to um, hospital chains and uh, doctors uh, so integrating them into again a seamless experience of working with us is what this app aims to do and finally it is also about taking our employee engagement to the next level of integration how can we make their work life easier more productive how can we make learning and training more seamless a lot of it is self learn how to how can we make it more intuitive the reason that you buy an iphone compared to an android phone is because it is so intuitive it doesn't mean that it does everything but what it does it does better than anybody else and that's what our uh, digital uh, transformation aims to do that what we do we must do this better than anybody else and that's why it's not a stationary target either you will see us update our offerings year on year uh, so that we at least have the chance to play in this uh, very competitive space what would be the size of uh, this uh, i mean in terms of the customer base which you will really be have once you do this the kind of merchants and the i mean some idea of what is the kind of transactions that you will be able to do it's a very important question uh, from a materiality point of view uh, currently in bajaj finance uh, we have 50 million plus active customers that are credit tested that are credit approved for multiple products almost half of these are digitally working with us to buy uh, different products and uh, we are working uh, with the other half as well to enable them to do that typically if if you see the 100000 stores that we have over the coming years each of these stores will interact with us end to end digitally if you look at the number of partners that we have on our debt management side on the collection side uh, we have again built a software for them so that as they interact with customers it is done with a high level of compliance it is done with the right information to the right customer so that the whole experience is as frictionless again as possible so entire debt management uh, services over the next year year and a half will also go digital so will our employees engage so it is not that it's going to be a percentage of our business by and large our entire business in the coming years will be digitally enabled so you said you will have 50 million customers already i mean when to begin with see in the next 4 5 years what is the kind of numbers that you are looking at today as i said bajaj finance has uh, 50 plus about 52 53 million uh, credit tested full kyc customers i believe uh, outside of a few large banks um, and even they would not have it digitally we we probably be the largest ones to have it digitally a lot of your uh, payment companies who talk about a much larger customer base but those are not credit tested kyc customers fully kyc customers we should be clear about that in addition uh, currently itself bajaj finance adds about 5 to 7 million new customers every year uh, so that will happen we'll continue to accelerate on that when i look at across our financial services group when i take into account our insurance and other businesses as well we are today close to 150 million customers of course with the right amount of chinese walls um in this we've been working with our existing customers when they come for claims when they come for uh, new products to ask them if they want to experience our products and services across what the group offers and those that uh, authorize and approve then become available as well for cross sell and uh, hence if i see in a five year period um there should be no reason why we should not be at 150 200 million 
customers who we actively work with. Um, another important, uh, I would say, area for us is uh, payments. And uh, currently, we have a number of initiatives. Uh, we have a prepaid license. Our own uh, payment, uh, I would say, gateway will be implemented over the next uh, year or so. And what payments does is payments ends up becoming a very strong transactional glue for customers. Because, you know, every day we are, we are using now, whether it's Google Pay, whether it is XYZ Pay, uh, and tomorrow we will use Bajaj Pay. And we will use that in the same way, whether you want to buy groceries, whether you're paying at your restaurant bill, whether you're ordering, ordering something online. Uh, so the engagement is very high on a transaction basis um, using payment. But a payment platform by itself doesn't necessarily make much money because their engagement, you're not willing to pay any premium pricing, especially when there are multiple of them. So for somebody like us that already manufactures and sells loans, distributes insurance, investment products, where we make money in Bajaj Finance, adding payment becomes a natural extension to create that glue for the customer. But yet we then cross-sell them our products and solutions where we make money. So that is what distinguishes us from others. And uh, if I were to broaden the argument to why should somebody like us get this uh, 150, 200 million customers in the next five years, uh, it would be one, using payments as a transaction tool. The second is on the investment side. So today, whether it's fixed deposits, whether it's mutual funds, whether it is uh, other uh, financial instruments, as we start selling more and more of these to the existing customers, it becomes a relationship loop because a person wants to come to the app or wants to come to the site to see what's their investment portfolio, how is it growing, engages with uh, the team. So this becomes relationship loop. And uh, then when you sell them your uh, core products, whether uh, that's a loan or whether that's, uh, say, an insurance product, then you add the next glue, which is in our case, the business glue. So a combination of a transaction glue, a relationship glue, and a business glue is what creates for us a, a holistic set of offerings, which engages with the customer, keeps the customer relevant to us, and vice versa, and ensures that the customer gains from interacting and engaging more and more with us and we gain from that experience as well. Uh, you have relationships with a uh, lot of uh, retailers from whom we buy, whether our televisions or our consumer goods, basically. <laughs> so would you have to build a pretty substantial e-commerce platform? And my second question is that uh, if you are going to build an e-commerce platform, does it in any way uh, conflict with the fact that... Uh, you are one of the largest players where you are a partner with other e-commerce uh, players, where you are financing uh, the needs of their customers. The biggest difference why we end up working not only through our own platforms, but with most of the large platforms, is that we are an enabler. So we don't compete. We are not ourselves earning by selling the physical product. We are enabling whether it's the digital platforms on which these products get sold. We're enabling real-life stores to sell uh, those products. Uh, we're enabling doctors to get closer to patients. We're enabling patients to get to hospitals through our new health solutions business. Um, so we end up being a very strong enabler. Even today, we have an e-commerce platform where we have about 15,000 uh, retailers that uh, sell their products and services. And uh, this currently is on our FinServe markets, wherein we end up enabling them by getting them customers, by providing loans and insurance to those customers. But we don't sell the products. So as a result, we are not competing with the retailer. The same would be true for the large e-commerce platforms. We don't sell the product, but we finance the customer. And uh, that's why I see our enabler role as a very significant role where we are collaborating to help sell the end product and uh, we are not competing. A lot of the e-commerce players have also looked at, you know, in order to increase stickiness, they've also got into things like uh, entertainment, music as a glue to keep 
customers in would you as a large player in this space look at other clues beyond just the financial services group so again we have no plans to directly end up uh, building businesses that sell those products our focus is on enabling that by building the platforms by ensuring that as you're saying gaming is becoming uh, a very significant uh, business opportunity uh, but beyond that look at the entire digital world look at the metaverse uh, look at nfts look at uh, digital art we we are closely monitoring these we are also trying to understand the space uh, so that we can uh, separate out between what is real and uh, what is what is noise because what is real will still need financing will still need insurance um, will still need a platform to house it and uh, store it blockchain comes in relevant over there as well for authentication uh, so these are all new spaces and as we follow it as well uh, we will monitor and decide which of these to play the enabler enabler role uh because some of them are going to become uh, very real opportunities uh in the coming years but if i were to even see today while we built a very diversified set of uh, products and solutions in the lending and associated spaces uh there are still areas that we need to build on so for example uh, later this year we will launch an online uh, store for two wheelers and uh, across multiple brands but basically again financing our own customers uh, i don't think any of uh, bajaj autos uh, competitors will let us sit in their showrooms but uh, our own uh, 150 million customers that i said across our companies why can't we give them a pre approved uh, two wheeler loan why can't we give them uh, an insurance policy with that so this becomes a natural extension for us we are also in the used uh, four wheeler space the last few years as we uh, build build greater capability and size in this space we will seriously evaluate if we expand this to um, go into the new four wheeler space uh, again looking looking at uh, strategic collaborations there with uh, some of the large four wheeler majors some of them have been chatting with us to see whether we can do something together so even within existing spaces on the consumer side there are enough opportunities we've also in the last 7 uh, or 8 years time become reasonable players both in the sme lending space and in the housing space and we will continue to grow those also as you have experience in the auto sector the electric vehicle sector is opening up and it has obviously new challenges of financing many of the uh, ev players say that it is difficult to get finance and there are lots of issues which happen how do you see this space spanning out very clearly the ev space is an evolving space in india um, but if you look at the ev space uh, over the last decade look at the first few years of tesla they were miserable failures mm. um, no production targets were met uh, quality was an issue uh, profitability was an issue um, building at scale was a big challenge but over the last uh, so many years they are managing to get that right one by one and as a result today the market cap of tesla is more than all the other auto companies uh, put together now should it be or not is another question i'm not uh, going into that but uh, i believe that the ev space is here to stay it may not be the only way towards uh, clean energy because we know at the back of electric is still very often uh, thermal uh, power plants but at least it brings in cleaner environment into the bigger cities which end up being more polluted you may also see hydrogen you may also see hybrids uh, coming up but overall what we are talking about is a cleaner energy vehicle space and um, we are seeing that after cop 26 uh, countries around the world are committed to our uh, towards a cleaner climate going into the coming years uh, once again we think a lot more commitment needs to come from the developed countries that have developed on the back of polluting the rest of the world they, they have a responsibility now to support the other countries to get to a level using clean energy sources but again that's another discussion i believe countries like india have made their commitment towards uh, uh, ev and clean energy and uh, this will require 
significant amount of upgradation of infrastructure on the ground uh, from charging stations to swappable batteries if that's possible to setting up battery manufacturing facilities our entire make in india and uh, pli schemes should help uh, there as well it will require innovation within india by the auto companies and uh, it will clearly require significant amount of uh, financing and insurance for the entire supply chain not just at the customer level but for the entire uh, supply chain and this is a, an area where uh, even at bajaj finance but uh, more particularly also at our insurance companies we are doing a uh, significant amount of work so that we prepare ourselves as this space uh, starts evolving uh, you have uh, got into uh, the whole mutual fund space and you have also done a lot of innovation in the health space and these seems to uh, be two new areas uh, so just wanted to understand uh, your entry to mutual funds why did you uh, get in uh, in this space which looks very crowded also you are approaching the uh, health space very differently from uh, others so if you could elaborate on how you are looking at these two businesses the mutual fund uh, space is uh, a very new space for us uh, we actually first applied for a license in 2011 when we got an entrance for license mm-hmm. uh, but when we looked at the space and even at that time it was quite crowded we were very clear that we didn't want to be a me too and that, and that's why as we were building our customer base across other uh, businesses uh, we put that on hold uh, now with the very large number of customers that we have we believe that we can create a set of um, unique offerings in uh, the mutual fund space by looking at different customer segments by not doing just a one size fit all product by looking at uh, much lower costs than uh, what the traditional industry is used to and this is by leveraging technology leveraging the digital space which has evolved quite a bit in the last decade as well uh, i won't talk more about that at this uh, stage but as we start launching that business towards the end of the year uh, we'll talk more about uh, how we want to differentiate ourselves and uh, make products that are relevant to our own existing customers and naturally to the larger set of customers as well the health solutions is a very interesting space you know we've been doing uh, loans to doctors to uh, individuals to patients for their medical requirements for many years uh, we've also been insuring them uh, health insurance has been a very significant business for us due to which we have our network of clinics of uh, hospitals around the country and uh, about 3 years ago one day we said that you know let's let's look at this uh, whole uh, problem from the customer's point of view so rather than looking at it inside out from a point of view of a lending company from point of view of an insurance company uh, why don't we look at it as a customer as a patient and uh, when i look at uh, or when we looked at it from that space we realized how disorganized this uh, entire sector was if you are a young 30 35 year old uh, couple maybe with a kid or two uh, you are moving jobs moving into another city you don't know which doctor to go to you don't know who's a good gp uh, you're not able to get appointments you don't know which is a good quality lab you don't get uh, access to hospitals you have to start your life all over again your medical life if you go to the doctor also especially if you go to your gp a, a good gp needs to know you for a few years to be able to clinically examine you to be able to read through your uh, medical history and guide you with what is the right solution for you maybe very often you have a cold you always get a cold when a, when the weather changes like i do so you don't need medication mm-hmm. you probably need a little bit of steam and uh, cleaning for 2 3 days and your allergy gets over but if somebody doesn't know that they will medicate you and uh, in india we are used to getting over medicated compared to other parts of the world in addition our gps end up being so busy that when we did a survey we realized that the average gp spends between 25 and 30 minutes with a patient in singapore and the us whereas in india it is 5 to 7 minutes but 5 to 7 minutes that person has to assess your problem has to hear you out has to ask you for your past history and then prescribe you medication so uh, and then if you go back again in 3 to 4 months again the same thing happens all over again so we said why don't we 
digitally organize this and create a health solutions platform which we have launched which is called bajaj uh, fitsav health on this platform we are aggregating so now in over 200 cities we have aggregated almost 100000 doctors over uh, uh, 1100 hospitals we will take it to 5000 hospitals we are aggregating pharmacies we are putting together clinics we are putting together uh, laboratories and we are creating solutions health solutions for a customer with loans and insurance built in so for example uh, we've got arogya care our uh, premier healthcare solution which builds in um, linkages to the gp you get access to the best gps near you you get x number for a particular price you get x number of visits free for you and the family you get discounts on your uh, medicines you get access to hospitals and you get insurance built in and support on financing when required based on uh, your uh, credit so you are converting what would have, what would have been disparate products and uh, putting together a solution for customers making their life easier we have also created a uh, patient management software for doctors and over 10000 doctors have implemented it where uh, patients health records would be stored with patient's approval their prescriptions will be stored uh, teleconsultation is available we are doing now nearly 100000 appointments a month out of which more than half are teleconsultations and all this data with uh, patient approval becomes available to us so that over a period of time we can create customizable outcomes so the whole idea is to create customizable personalized uh, preventive and prepaid outcomes for uh, individuals over a period of time and that's what makes this a very interesting business you are considered to be a non bank but a bank in many ways because you offer most of the services so the question is if the rules are such that you actually can get a banking license does it really now with the kind of size that you have and the kind of digitization that you're doing does it uh, really matter for you to raise uh, funds in a bank you have an advantage or there are more regulatory hassles how do you see this assuming that even the license rules are such that you can do it conceptually if you think of two circles and one is a bank and one is a non bank and if you bring in an overlap we represent probably the best of the overlap right now so we do most of what a bank can do and we do most of what an nbfc can do but we do it in a robust long term solid manner so we have from day one implemented most of the regulations which are applicable to banks for ourselves and that's why you saw even in our last quarter even the new regulation on provisioning that rbi brought in we took no hit because we were already following it on our own we follow our own liquidity uh, funds we set some aside based on what our asset liability committee thinks is required even though uh, as an nbfc we don't have to keep something like a um, ratio uh, that uh, banks have to do so we don't have a crr requirement but we keep one voluntarily um, our processes internal processes our operations processes our compliance processes our risk processes are more like a bank than a non bank and that's why when you look at our opex to revenue percentages also are similar to better than banks but higher than uh, non banks and this model has worked very well for us we do evaluate every 3 to 4 years whether it makes more sense to become a bank if an uh, if an rbi would approve it as well but so far we have found that our current model helps us grow for the next 3 to 5 years digitization and along with digitization what's been called as decentralized finance is becoming more and more relevant around the world and the more decentralized financing gets the less a monolithic environment like a bank will be relevant for the future but at the same time there is certain solidity in being a bank currently because of regulation the life window that rbi allows them uh, probably an infinite lease of life banks in india at least aren't allowed to fail so from a customer point of view at some point is there greater confidence in a bank than a non bank this is clearly an open question and it is something that we debate with as well we are 
pleased with some of the recent announcements for uh, new bank licenses that uh, RBI came out with and that will play again an important role in our decision making process uh, as and when we evaluate it in the future uh if you look at covid it obviously uh, made everybody sort of we look at their uh, uh, businesses and especially uh, the consumer business and buying really uh, got a hit and therefore one would assume that it also uh, uh, had a hit on uh, your business your consumer business uh, of course that is over what is the trend that you are seeing in terms of uh, because some people say that it's sort of started growing like you will now see huge amount of growth some people are saying no that hasn't happened uh, it is still a slow growth i i mean you see the trend which is happening on the ground because obviously you know you see the kind of loans that people are taking for consumer finance what is the trend uh, that you are seeing in the ground let me answer this um, in three parts one clearly the pandemic and the first lockdown was a shock it impacted lives so it impacted people personally it impacted livelihood as a result it impacted uh, lenders like ourselves and uh, and we reported higher losses than what we had in earlier years as a result of that also as the country came to a standstill um uh, it also impacted us in other areas it impacted us because we were not able to work we were all locked down uh, and as a result of that new hybrid work models developed as well um it impacted us because and when i say us i mean overall industry also because it made us realize that an event as large as that which impacts every part of life is possible this is clearly that black swan event and how do you plan for that in the future how do you build the right nimbleness the right capability into you your people management your people skills into your processes into how you deal with customers should this happen again because you could have multiple waves uh, we all hope that we are towards the end of this pandemic but you you can never be sure so uh, it impacted us in different ways now coming to the current period what we have seen over the last three quarters is that uh, there are some very good months and then there are slower months clearly there are segments which got impacted the worst in this pandemic anything which was contact based uh, so restaurants physical stores travel hospitality hotels also small businesses small businesses got impacted while between the government and the rbi uh, they played a very strong supportive role many of them came out of the first wave but in the second wave they went down so anybody linked to those businesses is still facing some hard times we have overall seen the last few months to be very strong and uh, assuming the pandemic continues to stay under control uh, we see the pre covid days clearly coming back uh, in bajaj finance what is also very important is that learnings from this as a way to running business to running lives how do people make personal choices going forward this is going to be very important for businesses to choose and different businesses that have different levels of digital adoptions will end up doing this differently but we think uh, this will be significant it will not necessarily be going back to the lockdown days but neither will it be going back to pre covid days there will be a hybrid model that will will evolve and i think that hybrid model will focus primarily on building greater flexibility in the business model so that you're there for your customers and partners and greater flexibility and choices for employees uh, what kind of business comes from rural india for you a whole bunch of uh, consumer loans we do loans to uh, s- uh, small and medium businesses uh, so we would have uh, over 10 different products in uh, rural india as well so out of this uh, 50 million kyc customers how much would you have in rural today i would say currently approximately 8 to 10% okay and uh, that is something that is growing as well interestingly mm-hmm. over the years through even the lockdowns we have seen that the uh, credit performance of our uh, rural and semi urban customers has been better than our urban customers even though urban we are probably amongst the best in the country but our rural has been even better now this is both 
choosing the right customers but also the right level of engagement and also just shows their own uh, ability to manage credit risk coming back to your father uh, he was always considered to be the auto man of india one has always talked to him about the automobile industry two wheelers he had strong opinions about mobile scooters you know everything and he was very open about it but one didn't see him a uh, lot of articulation about the finance business so did he give you any advice on this and what to do or he said no you look after it <laughs> this is not my business uh, my father was uh, uh, an auto man but he had this uncanny ability and a number of people in their uh, memorial uh, contributions to him mentioned that who knew him well to focus both on the big picture at 30000 feet and grasp uh, what the issue was and simultaneously dive into the smallest of detail where he would tell you where you haven't crossed the t or dotted an i mm-hmm. and um, and while he wasn't an expert in the financial services uh, business uh, that's where uh, nanu pamnani helped us d- tremendously but in all our reviews with my father my team members used to come back tremendously energized and uh, initially even surprised as at how he had the ability to pick up the relevant questions and ask them that so they had to be on their toes they had to be prepared uh, for those discussions but also the advice that he gave uh, of course he would not tell you do this loan or that loan because that was not uh, what he was expected to but the advice that he gave uh, used to be very very relevant and a personal anecdote for me was i think it was 2006 between 2006 7 when we were significantly evaluating uh, demerging the financial services business and uh, as you know my older brother rajiv who was formerly in the seat uh, driving uh, bajaj auto to new heights and uh, and i volunteered i said that you know uh, let me move on to the financial services business uh, uh, let me build something Uh, it existed already but uh, see what we can do because india is providing this significant opportunity at this point of time economy is growing 8 and a half 9 9 and 1/2% so let's do this and uh, after dinner because we stayed together uh, we used to very often just uh, stroll for a bit and he was, he was very candid so he told me he said that you know so far uh, you were sitting in the back seat in bajaj auto so while none of the credit came to you neither did any of the blame for, or any of the failures come to you uh, said if you go to the financial services side and this is something that's very new but given your mba uh, given your experience of the last decade in bajaj auto he said uh, there's no reason why you should not be able to build this business up but keep in mind the success and failure will be both on your watch you will be responsible and i leave it to you to decide to do it and when i told and i told him right away i said this is what i want to do and uh, and he told me sir i can't be more proud because i hope that would be your answer but as a father and of course as a chairman of the group and the businesses i had to put the risks out in front of you as well so as he was with anybody else he was always very direct uh, he was always very black and white on what the opportunities the risks were but to me he was always very very support what are the things you uh, learned from him in business which you have replicated in what you do in bajaj in bajaj finance in your companies etc and all what are those two three things which you think really made that difference in looking at him maybe he didn't tell it to you directly but you saw uh, that he was doing this and you picked it up and said that this is the way i want to do my business too yeah so a few things one very clearly as he walked the talk was work hard work with honesty never compromise give up the business or don't get into a business but never compromise on ethics and integrity and third which a lot of people find difficult to do is speak your mind speak your mind also means speak your mind in a meeting today across our companies the youngest persons are asked to talk and speak their mind and give their view because mm-hmm. that's how you build confidence that's how you try new things that's how you learn from failures um that's how you build your own success so to me these three things were really what his life stood for everybody who knows him these things stood for that but there were other things than that one he he 
heard everyone. Of course, he he loved talking. So everybody says that when Rahul Bajaj spoke, you had to listen. But he was a very good listener as well. When he heard a point of view which was stronger than his own, he was open to accepting that point of view. So to me, listening to others, and as distinct from him, I talk. Don't talk first. I listen first, and then I talk. That listening. to help you arrive at a better decision is uh, also very important and then once you are sure don't wait for consensus be clear once you heard everybody you've seen the data take that chance go ahead and act because otherwise you can intellectually keep planning but unless you execute you can never move ahead and be prepared that you will fail a few times it doesn't matter but it is important to keep moving so these were some of the i mean there were a lot of lessons but uh, these were some of the clear simple basic ones which i think apply to each and every one of us thank you wonderful talking to you sanjeev as usual it was thank a pleasure you. likewise if you like this video share it and subscribe to business standard for more news views and insights log on to www.business-standard.com do also follow us on youtube twitter facebook instagram telegram and linkedin